hello students after finishing sex determination into the lecture number 9 in lecture number 10 we are back with uh, the mutation and pedigree analysis so these are the two main topics what we are supposed to understand in this lecture let us talk about mutation first right now word mutation is very important as far as uh, sexual mode of reproduction, genetics and evolution is concerned, right? Mutation is the process by which the traits are getting changed and variation is produced. So mutation is very important with respect to evolution process or either evolving new character or elimination of a particular unwanted character through the, uh, the group of species. So mutation is a process which is responsible for the, pro uh, uh, for the production of the variation or new traits in an individual. Now, we are supposed to understand how and why this mutation is happening, right? So, if I consider the words which are given, if you see uh, the photographs, here the person is having six fingers in total. Here fingers are conjoined and here the eye colors are different. So, it is a difference into the character from the normal character they are variant and this is termed as variation. Variation can be resulting into either positively or negatively as well. So if an individual is uh, slowly producing the mutation leading to a particular new trait, it is positive effect but in sudden mutation this kind of variation can be possible where unusual type of traits are getting generated. So mutation is having both type of effect positive and negative. Sudden mutation always can be dangerous. Right? Fine. Let us discuss further about mutation. It is sudden, heritable change that is occurring into the DNA sequences <coughs> that is into the gene and that is why it is resulting into the change in genotype and change in the phenotype of an organism. So variation is produced. So it is leading to variation in DNA or in phenotype. Recombination and mutation. These are the two process by which variation is produced. This is a key fact what you are supposed to understand. Recombination, we know that how it is produced. It is by meiosis, by crossing over and mutation is abnormal behavior of DNA either at <coughs> recombination or at exchange of DNA during cell division. So, mutation is uh, almost negative by their effect and recombination is always positive by their effect. So, that is the mutation what we are talking about. Please take the screenshot of the slide. Now comes the mutation types. So, types of mutation are basically of two. Number one, frame shift mutation and number two, point mutation. Both you are supposed to remember with one reference. If mutation is in single base pair, do remember this, single base pair then it is termed as point mutation, single point. 
and if it is into DNA segment that is large sequence then it is termed as frame shift mutation right why frame shift because if suppose this is the DNA if a particular segment is cut down and eliminated this entire strip entire segment or entire frame has to shift to join this segment so entire frame is shifting from your right side to your left side and that is why it is known as frame shift mutation ready example of point mutation is sickle cell anemia which is given later on in this chapter so that you are supposed to keep in your mind that point mutation example is sickle cell anemia and that will be described later on in this chapter fine there are so many example of frame shift mutation but particularly sickle cell anemia why it is given because it is explained later on into the detail so please take the screenshot of this slide right uh, mutation is generally at two level number one gene number two chromosomes if they are at the gene level it creates mutation at a particular gene and particular trait but if they are chromosomal then it can lead to cancer mutagens the factors which are responsible for creating the mutation it is called mutagens and they are having two types physical and chemical physical metagens are uv radiation alpha beta gamma x-rays and chemical mutagens are mustard gas phenol formalin acetic acid formic acid ammonia etc so this is these are the mutagens which are causing the mutation now we as we know that disorders can be possible at two level level number one is genes and level number two is chromosomes so number one genetic level and number two chromosomal level so due to the change in either genes or chromosomes genetical disorder can be possible the disorders or or, or we can say uh, the abnormalities right and that is leading that is caused by actually uh, change into gene or chromosomes that's what our next topic of discussion right now right fine so there are two types of disorder one genetical disorders which are also termed as mendelian disorders major examples which are given here number one hemophilia number two sickle cell anemia number three phenylketonuria number four color blindness cystic fibrosis thalassemia this all are genetical disorder or we can say mendelian dis uh, disorders and very few are chromosomal disorders right which are down syndrome kleinfelter syndrome or turner syndrome these are the three main examples what we are going to see later on in this uh, chapter so these are the types of disorders please take the screenshot of this slide now if we want to define the mendelian disorder or learn the uh, mendelian disorder genetic disorder the disorders which are caused by alteration or mutation in 
one particular gene then it is said to be or addressed as mendelian disorder or genetic disorder right the pattern of inheritance of mendelian disorder can be traced in a family pedigree analysis so this could be our second uh, focus area pedigree analysis mendelian disorders may be dominant or a recessive and by pedigree analysis it is easy to understand whether trait is dominant or recessive so if we want to identify we want to learn we want to study about that disorders which are spreaded throughout the family in the society we are supposed to use pedigree charts so our topic of discussion today is pedigree analysis right uh, please take the screenshot of this slide first okay these are the examples which we are going to learn later on first we are going to see the pedigree analysis now as far as pedigree analysis is concerned this is the example how pedigree analysis can be denoted formulated and represented right let us see how it is getting formulated right now in human control crosses are not possible why because we are having long life span life span of 100 years so we cannot see multiple of generation in short duration that is called controlled cross we cannot see that due to the life span long life span that is why we are using family history of a particular trait right so family history about the inheritance is used now such an analysis of trait in several generation of the family is known as pedigree analysis family ma ambo hoy che ek purvaj hoy ema thi be ena sons hoy daughters hoy vadi ena chokra chokariyo that is ambo in general in gamda ma hoy apne so that is ambo and this is genetical ambo what we can say right so pedigree analysis it is said to be or referred to be in uh, understanding genetical disorder in genetics fine let us move ahead the representation of chart showing family history is called family tree or the pedigree in human genetics pedigree study is utilized to trace the inheritance of a specific trait or abnormality or disease so this is the use of pedigree right we are supposed to we can uh, trace the inheritance we can uh, conclude whether next generation can have the, uh, the they have the possibility of having that abnormality or not or if i am having or somebody is having that from where it has been uh, it has been actually uh, arrived right so that is how we can trace the entire uh, inheritance of that particular trait by using the pedigree analysis so let us see how this pedigree analysis can be done please take the screenshot of this slide so these are the symbols which are used to represent this or to make the entire chart now the symbol for normal male is simple square symbol for normal female is a simple round sphere unspecified there is no specification needed then we can put this kind of crossed square so there there is no need of specification of either male or female and if they are affected with a particular abnormality or disease 
then they are all denoted with a specific type of color so if the boxes or round is colored then it is considered two as affected individuals now for example this is denoting a male this is denoting a female and cross line between them is referred to as marital relation or sexual relation mating ready so this representation is used now if they are closely linked they are relative blood relative and they have a particular type of marital correlation then it is called mating between the relatives and two lines are used for that right and if you see here parents and uh, children are shown into this chart letter which is given into the next representation here so above line is actually indicating the parent and lower line is indicating the children so parents are at above level and children are at below level so this is parental p generation and this is f1 generation what we can say ready so this couple is having a, a relationship and they have two child one is female one is male that's way we are supposed to understand the chart right the next chart this couple is having one male child and it is affected with a particular disease this chart is meaning like that right and this specific symbol is denoting five unaffected individuals or offsprings altogether so no separate boxes are supposed to be mentioned it is a shortcut which is used ready now uh, these are the representation which is given right uh, we are going to study them one by one but two representation which is given into textbook are these about the mendelian disorder the a diagram number a and diagram number b right both are separately demonstrating one for dominant trait and the other for recessive trait now if i talk about the first diagram diagram number a it is showing the dominant trait and if i talk about diagram number b it is showing recessive trait so this is the first thing we are supposed to consider when we are observing the flow chart or pedigree chart we are supposed to decide whether they are dominant or recessive but how now this is generation number 1 this is generation number 2 and this are generation number 3 in this chart similarly this is number 1 this is number 2 and this is number 3 now if you observe these successive uh, uh, generations in first chart you can notice that no generation 1 2 3 all are affected individual are all the generation you can find the affected individuals so none of the generation is being skipped none of the generation is skipping so this kind of representation is representing the dominant trait in dominant representation there is no skipping of any generation 
then it leads to dominant trade and if look here parental generation is having no effect but number one and number two f1 and f2 they are having the trait individuals with trait so one generation is skipped so skipping of generation means they are a recessive trait so these you are supposed to consider first and then you are supposed to go through or go for considering whether it is autosomal or sex linked as we know that we have two types of chromosome one is autosomes that is uh, uh, 1 to 22 number of chromosome and 23rd pair is sex chromosome so whether we are supposed to discuss now about which type of uh, trait it is it is autosomal or it is sex linked now that is also observable easily observable if you compare both uh, the diagram or both the pedigree pedigree number a and pedigree number b both are having one common characteristic feature that males and females both are affected by the disease here also males and females both are affected by disease if very commonly it is observed into large quantity or average similar quantity then generally it is used to be autosomal but if particularly either males or females are more attracted or affected or showing a particular disease then it can be sex linked chromosomes right sex linked trait so this is how this two very important feature you are so look uh, going to look for analysis of the pedigree ready so let us find uh, uh, the variety of the pedigrees uh, one by one please take the screenshot first of this uh, pedigrees now the example of the pedigrees first is autosomal dominant pedigree right now what you are supposed to look for if a pedigree is given what you are supposed to look for identifying the autosomal dominance now if you see the indicators given here affected female affected male unaffected female unaffected male this is very simple the notion that we know right now the important point to be remembered here are traits are common in pedigree look in every generations you can find why it is because it is dominant so it is common in all the generations traits is found in every generation and affected individual also transmit the trait to about half of their children barabar che je affected che e dominant it is forwarding the character into the next generation almost to the half of the children both the case you can see right so this is the characteristic feature of identifying the autosomal dominant characteristic number 3 the last there are few autosomal dominant human disease only few right an example is skeletal disorder which causes the dwarfism achondroplasia is the name of the disease right and very few are there very very few so uh, this chart shows the example of autosomal dominant pedigree uh, you are supposed to take the screenshot of this slide mm. okay just a moment mm. okay please take this screenshot fine the other autosomal recessive now for recessive you know very first 
identification is what it is keeping the generation or not ready so traits are rare in the pedigree look out of so many uh, individuals only few are there it means they are recessive if few are showing that character it is recessive it is a first indication traits are often skipping the generation so here is the skipping generation first rare second skipping the generation and traits affects male and female equally this is the third characteristic feature if these three characters you find in pedigree analysis then it is said to be autosomal recessive characteristics ready now the examples of it so possible disease includes cystic fibrosis sickle cell anemia phenylketonuria and setsa disease right fine so these are few example of it please take the screenshot of this slide now x linked recessive pedigree third example common characteristic of x linked recessive pedigree is first whether it is sex link or not when the uh, abnormality lies to a particular type of gender maybe in male or maybe in female that would be definitely uh, sex linked and mostly sex linked are x linked fine so let us consider all the examples so here if you see only males are getting affected throughout the chart so number one character traits is rare out of so many individual only few are affected so it is rare right trait can skip the generation it is skipping generation number 2 and 4 right affected fathers do not pass their sons right look this is affected father if it is not passing it to their sons then it is called x linked recessive pedigree why it is that because if i am talking about uh, this chart for example uh, x and y x is affected this is indicating affected and this is x x now this is a baby boy so what is the chromosome which is received from the father will be y only which is unaffected normal and x from his mother so it is unaffected so it remains unaffected in that sense ready so affected father do not pass any of the disease to their sons and male are more often affected than female and that is why it is x linked recessive it is important characteristic feature this both are female are carrier or it is passing the trait from one generation to the other they are the carriers right so these are the important characteristic feature of x linked uh, recessive disease please take the screenshot now x linked dominant pedigree x link and dominant shows generally more number of affected male uh, sorry females right possibilities are to the both but most are females that's what you are supposed to understand right so traits is common in pedigree if you see very common in all generations and most number here also they are appeared so they are very common wherever it is the dominant it will be very common not rare right affected father pass to all the other daughters if father is affected then it is passing to all their daughter this is identification character which is not given here 
right males and female are equally likely to be affected but mostly the daughters are getting affection x link dominant diseases are extremely unusual right and they are very lethal so before birth in males and only seen in females so in males usually why it is not seen because it is lethal before birth so male are getting die during the pregnancy it is not getting birth only female with this kind of disease can get birth that is why it is like that right so that's why uh, in pedigree it is not shown that males are affected uh, for example incontinemia pigmenti that is skin lesion is the example of these disease this type of disease actually right so uh, this is example of x linked dominant pedigree please take the screenshot now if i talk about y link inheritance it is connected only with males never females because it is connected by y uh chromosome and it is if you see is not skipping the generation never skips the generation every generation all the males whatsoever will be it will be affected and that is why it is called y linked inheritance no dominant no recessive because only y chromosome is dominant so it is only dominant do remember that right so traits on y chromosomes are only found in male never in female father traits are passed into their sons compulsorily and dominance is irrelevant because it is into the dominant only y linked chromosome that's why only one copy of each y linked gene it is hemizygous type of uh, arrangement so this is uh if the uh, uh, characteristic feature is found only in males it is supposed to be y linked inheritance right please take the screenshot and almost the last mitochondrial gene it is very special right very special mitochondria uh um, inheritation is done by genes which are present in mitochondria and it is done only by mother not by fathers if a female has mitochondrial trait all her offspring inherits by it if a female has mitochondrial trait none of his offspring is inheriting it now how you can identify you can identify by this pedigree analysis this is affected and it is forwarded to both of their children so uh, this is a proof of the statement and if male is affected it is not at all forwarding the character into the either of their children both are safe so if you find these characteristic feature in pedigree you definitely could conclude that it is mitochondrial gene inheritance you are supposed to find this character ready so this is identification of mitochondrial gene inheritance so that's the conclusion uh, please take uh, the screenshot of uh, the genes uh, sorry uh, the slide and that's where i am concluding uh, uh my uh, class number 10 today uh the last discussion uh, what we are supposed to make today is uh dominant versus recessive right a dominant versus a recessive now what is dominant the character which is expressed thoroughly and recessive they are skipping so there are three important parameters what you are supposed to take care of when you are comparing both of them 
if two affected people have an unaffected child it must be dominant pedigree ready and d is dominant mutant allele and small d is recessive that is wild type allele and both parent are, are capital d small d then the normal child is small d small d right so small d is recessive two recessive are uh, homozygously if present into the child then it is normal child now if you talk about the second character if two unaffected people have an affected child it is definitely recessive pedigree for example capital r is dominant wild type allele and small r is recessive so dominant is capital r small r is recessive and small r recessive pedigree what we are supposed to looking so both parent r capital r small r and affected child will be small r small r so where it is recessive pedigree uh, both recessive that is homozygous recessive will be affected that's the conclusion exactly reversible to the first one and the third if every affected person has an unaffected parent it is a dominant pedigree right uh, what it is meaning unaffected parent but the children are affected so it is a dominant pedigree for example uh, affected parent are there right and affected uh, offsprings are there so one affected parent or both the affected parent is forwarding the character into the next generation so affected person or affected offspring will be generated so all will be parents and children will be showing a particular type of trait that is showing the dominant pedigree these are the conclusion what we have already seen during the analysis of all example of the uh, types of the pedigree what we have seen in the slides and that's the end of uh, the lecture i'll see you later with all the example of mendelian disorder and chromosomal disorder into the next uh, lecture uh, till then i'll see you take care and have a nice time